Hello, hello, it's Amanda, and I have got some guanciale, uh, which is pork jowl cured, and I'm gonna add that to a pan, and that's because I'm making bucatini carbonara, or pasta carbonara, which is, you know, pasta that is essentially cloaked in cheese, parmesan, and pecorino, and egg, and a little bit of pork fat, which is always yummy. And so I've got a mix of pancetta and guanciale because I only had a couple of ounces of, of guanciale. I'm supposed to be using six ounces, and I haven't really measured. I am approximating. You know what? Yeah, I'm just gonna do that much. There we go. All good. Okay, so I'm gonna stick that over kind of a low to medium low heat. Uh, I'll start at medium just to get the pan going. Uh, but you wanna let it render the fat and get crisp, you just gotta have patience with that. And so while that happens, the other thing I'm gonna do is crack five eggs into a bowl. And I'm actually gonna crack them right into a serving bowl. So no, no, there's no sense in making the pasta in another bowl and then putting it into a serving bowl, um, especially when it's just a Sunday night dinner, which is what this is. And every weekend I say to myself, oh yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna dress up. I'm gonna like do my hair and look decent for one of these videos, but never happens. Just me here in my sweatpants. Uh, not PJs this time though. And yeah, my hair is doing weird things because I had it in a ponytail all day. So I've got five large eggs. Make sure you get out any shells out of there like I just did. I grated some Parmesan and some Pecorino. And you can tell the difference between the two because Parmesan is always a little bit more yellow and Pecorino is a little bit more white because it has sheep's milk in it as opposed to cow's milk. So this is starting to release some of the fat and I'm just going to break up any pieces that are stuck together, but otherwise kind of let it do its thing. And this recipe, by the way, comes from Sarah Jenkins, who I've known forever and who's an amazing cook. And she has lots of great recipes on the site. She calls for two tablespoons of freshly ground black pepper. And that's a little bit less than a tablespoon and I think that's plenty. I pre-ground it in advance and I'm gonna start turning this down. You see how it's getting active and gregarious. So I am going to turn it down a little bit and give it a stir. And my water is coming to a boil. Okay, so I've got my pasta water boiling. And this is how much salt I'm adding. A lot. This is starting to, oh yeah, now it's starting to get a little bit of color. I'm going to slow it down though. I'm sorry, I'm cooking this too, too fast because it's browning and I want the fatty bits to really let go of as much of their fat as possible before we mix it with the pasta. All right, while this is finishing up, I'm going to add my pasta to the water because there's pretty much nothing else to do for this dish other than cook the pasta and mix everything together. I'm just kind of gently nudging it, <laughs> encouraging it to get into the water. I'm gonna let that do its thing for a minute. And then, it's beer mission. I have a beer that's called Jam Up The Mash. It's a dry hopped sour. It's called the Amplified Voices Series by Collective Arts. Okay, I'm not really much of a sour drinker, but we're gonna see how this goes. Here is the very nicely designed label. And, ooh, it's very, it smells beautiful. It's sour. <laughs> I'm gonna try to like it. I'm gonna try to like it. Okay, so our pasta is doing its thing. Little sneak peek. This is a prototype of our 5-2 whisk, which is being designed in collaboration with our community. And what I think is really cool about it is that it has these three facets, which give you something to grip onto, which actually a lot of whisks lack. This is the prototype, so it's not final. That's why I like the, the whisk um, tines or bands, I don't know what you call them, are uh, a little loose. But I'm just gonna give it a whirl. Okay, and I'm gonna turn off my pancetta because I think it's looking really toasty and nice. Okay, so do I add all of the? Okay, yeah. I'm adding all the cheese. Wow, okay, this is fun. That there. Woo! That is a lot of cheese. 
I'm only gonna add half the pepper, which is actually a quarter of the total. Um, I figure I can always add more later. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. That is nice. That needs to get out of the water because it's, it's ready. And you want it to still have some of the water dripping off because you want to have a little bit of that in here. All right, okay, so what you want to do now is you just want to use tongs. You can use two big forks if you want to just blend the pasta with the eggs and it, this will, the eggs will cook in the heat of the pasta. As they cook, they'll thicken the sauce. That's Fiverr. She smells how good this smells and is whining because she's like, I would like some too, please. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the pancetta and guanciale and I'm not gonna add all the fat. I'm gonna, because there's quite a bit, I'm gonna add a little bit and then I can always add more later. Okay, all right, let's call that a day. All right, ooh, now it's starting to really look good. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm. Yum. All right. Time to taste. Go ahead. <laughs> I thought I added too much salt to the water. Nope. Mmm. Yum. That's really going well. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm going to taste again because it was so good. All right, admittedly, this is a hard one to just taste out of the big bowl. Ha ah, ah, ha, because the bucatini keeps unwinding, so I might just pick up, pick up a strand. Mmm. Really good. What'd you think? Mm. Okay. The teens are coming for more. Mmm. Right? Mm. Okay. The, the, the bucatini? Yep, bucatini, pasta carbonara. Bucatini carbonara. Woo! Okay. See you next week.